Spider-Man has been kicking around in the video game world since time immemorial, but arguably, he hasn't been done justice yet. Shattered Dimensions is hoping that sheer quantity is the missing piece of the puzzle. Are four Spideys better than one? Or yet another crossover best forgotten? <laughs> Can somebody tell me what's going on here? One day, Mysterio decides to rob a museum. His target? The Tablet of Order and Chaos, an artifact capable of bestowing unimaginable powers to its holder. Of course, Spider-Man is on the scene to stop him, and he almost does so handily. But just as Spidey's about to lay him out, the crafty prestidigitator deflects the blow with the tablet, causing it to shatter to pieces. By means of expedient plotting and unfathomable agent magic, the pieces of the artifact are scattered throughout space and time, each landing in the clutches of a supervillain. It's up to each era Spider-Man, guided by the psychic mutant Madam Web, to liberate each bit. You must gather all the pieces of the tablet before they fall into the wrong hands. An inspiring example of the narrative potential of games, Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions is not. Take this story for what it is. It's a device that allows the designers to tie together four completely disparate worlds and their respective rogues galleries, and not very well at that. You shattered it. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions spans four alternate universes in the Marvel continuum, each offering a different rendition of the venerable superhero that promises to be unique. There's the Amazing Universe, which houses the Spider-Man we're most familiar with, the reimagined Ultimate Universe, wherein he's still wearing the alien symbiote suit, the futuristic 2099 Universe with its genetically enhanced Spidey, and the old-timey Noir Universe, whose Spider-Man is forced to rely more heavily on stealth. Apart from the noir universe, which takes unsubtle cues from games like Batman Arkham Asylum and Splinter Cell Conviction, the differences between each of the Shattered Dimensions eras are mostly superficial. Regardless of which Spidey you're playing as, there's a clear formula that the game deviates from only occasionally. Every level starts out with a menacing grizzly or slapstick introduction to the supervillain boss, the tone depending on the universe. In most cases, you'll proceed to chase him down as you do battle with waves of enemies that neatly fit archetypes that span the universe, different as they may look. You'll fight a boss at least once before the final showdown, and sandwiched between these encounters is more chasing punctuated by more fighting or unfailingly tedious sequences that have you saving civilians from various catastrophes. After the boss fight, you retrieve the tablet shard and are free to go. The levels that don't follow the pattern so strictly aren't necessarily any less ponderous. One that takes place aboard a naval platform eschews the regular linear format, but instead has you scouring its multiple levels in search of waves of video cameras to destroy. After you've wrecked the third batch, you'll be yearning for some civilians in distress. <laughs> okay, good one. Okay, here we go. The game's set piece sequences and boss battles often show hints of brilliance, with their walloping scale and the way they enable Spider Man's mobility. During the moments when you're encouraged to go nuts with the web swinging while simultaneously worrying about the hordes of enemies underfoot, Shattered Dimensions can be pretty exhilarating, providing the controls are being cooperative. It's too bad there's so much of a focus on combat, which is boring in comparison. You think you're so hot, don't you? There's a leveling system in place that does its best to make sure you experience every bit of interaction the game is capable of rendering. You get XP for beating enemies, finding collectibles, and completing objectives, but also for a multitude of other things, all detailed in a vast catalog of in-game achievements. If you can think of a specific action, chances are there's a bonus objective tied to it. You unlock a whole mess of stuff with the points you earn, from health upgrades and extended combos to special attacks and bonus costumes. For better or worse, the system encourages a wholly compulsive approach to playing the game. The constant stream of goading feedback is very hard to ignore. Ah, you speak a great truth. Let it be your prize then. <laughs> The core of Shattered Dimensions' combat system is sound. You have access to an expandable list of cool moves and genuinely feel like you have a tool for every scenario the game throws at you. The problem is more one of pacing. The game is laid out in a way that makes battles feel constant and plotting most of the time, with not a whole lot of variety in terms of what you're fighting. Your adventures in the Noir universe hit on a totally different tempo, however. Similar to Batman in Arkham Asylum, Noir Spider-Man isn't very good at fighting people with guns. Your recourse is to catch them unawares and perform takedowns, stringing them up and beating them down from the shadows. The system works well enough, but it lacks the facility of control, not to mention the variety of its betters. 
The controls are decently functional, but feel a little roughshod at times. Wall crawling affords you a terrible view, and you'll frequently battle a spastic camera when trying to web zip to a surface. The targeting system in combat isn't very responsive either. You're also sure to encounter a few bugs, mostly involving getting stuck in the environment in some way, the worst of which will require you to reload a checkpoint. Oh well, we just won't use a lot of wide lenses. There's very little distinction between the four eras, apart from the stealth focus of the noir universe. The 2099 Spidey can slow time, and the ultimate one can enter a rage mode, but that's about it. It all comes off feeling like a squandered opportunity. Congratulations, Spider-Man. You really showed him what's what. Wah, wah. Shattered Dimensions looks convincing enough, though it's unlikely to knock your socks off. The amazing levels stand out with their vibrant looks that successfully evoke a cartoon. The noir universe hits some cool notes as well, despite the fact that its look is at this point pretty well trod. Each incarnation of Spider-Man also benefits from great voice talent, including such notables as Neil Patrick Harris and Dan Gilvezen of Spider-Man and his Amazing Friends fame. But I'm the most charming, right? The voice work lends the game a certain amount of legitimacy, but alas, they don't prevent you from getting tired of Spider-Man's knee slappers a third of the way into each level. Maybe that's the point. Wow, love your headdress. Is that from the Skull Collection? May I suggest an accoutrement? Perhaps something from the Webbing Collection. Ha! Ah, classic. <laughs> Spider-Man Shattered Dimensions lacks the variety to sustain its ten or so hours of length, and the imagination to truly make good on its multiple worlds concept. The experience is serviceable enough, but it won't inspire you the way that the best superhero games can. All but the most compulsive and devoted Spider-Man fans can experience the best it has to offer during the span of a rental. Oh.